Hi everybody. This year I did a couple of uh, the mud run slash obstacle races. I did the Warrior Dash in early August. That one is a 5k with a bunch of different obstacles, walls and mud pits to crawl through and uh, rope courses and cargo nuts to climb. And then towards the end of uh, or in September I did the Tough Mudder race, which was a much tougher race. It was a 12 mile run along with, I think it was like 23 or 24 different obstacles. And I get a question a lot of the time, what do you wear or what do you use when you do those mud runs? So I'm not a, a total veteran. I did a couple last year, I did a couple this year, but I did find a setup that works really well for me. So I wanted to share that with you. Each of these items, I'll do a deeper dive on um, in another video when I actually do reviews of the items. But one of the things that I like to have with me is I, is I know hydration is real important and depending on how long you're out on the course, eating something is real important. And I don't like to rely on the way stations uh, in the race. So what I do is I'm, um, I like to carry it with me. So in order to do that, uh, I, I'm using the Profile Designs uh, running belt. Now, I have a 34, 36 inch waist and these run very small. The XL says it's for 37 to 40 inch waists and typically this fits me reasonably well. I could probably go one size down, but it's definitely gonna be bigger than, you're gonna need a, a one, at least one size larger than you think you will. It's a belt that's got a Velcro on it along with some uh, piping that's reflective. And this is kind of the core of the whole system. The bottles, can, you can adjust where the bottle is on the belt by simply, it's got a backing here. That backing peels off and it allows the, you to place that bottle wherever you want it on the uh, belt. And then you just put this back in place. It's got the Velcro on one side and then that holds it to the belt and then that does not allow this water carrier to move anywhere. Uh, the water carriers are eight ounce water carriers. They look kind of like this, they look exactly like this. And then you just put it in and then you twist it to lock it in place. Now, if you're just running on the road, this is a pretty easy uh, and secure way to carry it. But when I was on my uh, Warrior Dash, I lost a couple of my bottles. Uh, one I found, one I didn't. And so what I did was I took a piece of inner tube, attached it to the bottom, and then I just, have it set up like this so that that holds that bottle in there but yet if I want to get at it I can get release it. I'll give you a more detailed review on this but what's neat about it is it's a completely um, modular system so I can have one bottle or I can have two bottles or I can have three bottles on my waist whatever I think I need for the run or for the race and then also these smaller pouches they've got neoprene pouches which are the perfect size for um, like the uh, the gel shots that you can carry around. I usually will take one of these about every 45 minutes uh, that I'm on the course and it just kind of keeps my carbohydrates up and keeps me feeling good during the course of the race. So that's my racing belt. Uh, it's got reflection, reflective piping all around it and on the back. So if I'm running on the road, it does a real nice job of keeping me visible. Then the other thing uh, that was real important to me was a good pair of shoes. I, I ran my Warrior Dash last year in a pair of toe shoes and it was okay, but there was really a, not a lot of traction in them. This year what I did was I went with uh, the Innovate uh, Rock Light 315s. Um, this is the Rock Light 315s. Um, it's a little bit heavier than some of the other Rock Light shoes, but I can't recommend the Rock Lights highly enough. Uh, like I said, the, I've got the 315s, it's a slightly heavier shoe. It's got more protection around the base. Uh, they offer these in different heel to toe, you know, height ratios. So depending on how, what your running style is, you can pretty much get whatever you want. They've got them as light as, you know, sub 300 uh, grams for the, per shoe. This one is 315 grams. What's neat about the Rock Lights is again, you can order pretty much whatever you want. The 315 stands for the weight of a single shoe. The, um, the rock light refers to the, the tread and the way that it's set up on the bottom of the shoe, uh, but they're great shoes and I've got to give a shout out. I bought them on Zappos and I have not dealt with online people that are any better. 
When I ordered them, I didn't know what size. By the way, these tend to run about a half size small. So uh, I normally wear a 10, but the 10 and a half is what actually fit me because they're a little bit narrow in the forefoot. And uh, all I did with Zappos was I ordered a 10 and a 10 and a half. Uh, great people to deal with. They got free shipping both ways and you just can't lose. It was a good price. They came to me in two days. So I can't recommend them highly enough. But this is the shoe that I wore. One of the big reasons is it's got a mesh upper and on the bottom, it's got a really nice, uh, really nice tread on it. Uh, I did not do much slipping at all on any of the obstacles or any of the mud areas. Um, it also stayed in place, so when I tightened it down, it's got the full lacing system here, so it stayed in place. I did not get my shoes sucked off of my feet, and uh, when a lot of the other people that were around me were falling all over the place, I was pretty much just running straight up these hills uh, because of these shoes. Great shoes, not road shoes. Um, I still run my regular running shoes on the road, but for any trail running or things like that, uh, this, these are great shoes. So the, the uh, Innovate, it's INOV-8, Rocklight 315s, uh, these were great shoes. Then as far as what I wore on my upper body, uh, I normally just wear uh, the, uh, I normally wear the Under Armour t-shirts, the regular loose fit, um, charged cotton t-shirts, but I didn't want to wear something loose on the mud run because I knew I was going to be getting all full of stuff. So what I did was I went with the Under Armour uh, compression sleeveless shirt and what was really nice about this was when I was crawling through the mud or I was going through stuff this pretty much kept all the mud out of places that I didn't want mud on my upper body and it was cool enough uh, but this was this was a really nice light option for my upper body. Uh, for my lower body I wore a pair just of regular compression shorts Regular, it's, it's kind of like a pair of bike shorts except without any padding on the inside. Um, they're no special, I think these were TYRs, but no special thing to them. They, were, they worked really, really well. One of the big advantages of these is that they, um, when you're sliding down them into the mud, they actually keep the mud out of places that you really don't want mud if you're going to be have to running, uh, have to be running. Uh, a couple of the women that I ran my Tough Mudder with uh, started complaining about that almost uh, right into the race, and it was a very uncomfortable run for them. Uh, they toughed through it, but it was very uncomfortable. So I wore the compression shorts, and then over the compression shorts, I just wore a pair of regular old nylon running shorts uh, because, well, just seeing me in compression shorts is not exactly a pretty thing, even though I've dropped a lot of weight. It's still not a good look for me. So uh, the red, the red running shorts over the top were were good. As far as I didn't really wear a hat or anything during the race, that wasn't a problem. I did wear a super real cheap pair of sunglasses so that if I lost them, it wasn't a big deal. Figures I didn't lose the sunglasses. If I'm sure if I'd worn expensive ones that. Um, I probably would have lost them. And then the only other thing that I did have with me in both races was I wore a GoPro camera in a chest mount, which was kind of cool. Uh, unfortunately, I wrecked the GoPro on the second race because I put the wrong housing on it and it got wet, but hey, that's my fault. So uh, that's the equipment that I used in my, uh, in my mud races and my obstacle races this year. It worked out really well for me. I hope it answered a couple of questions for you. I uh, hope you... If you do have any questions, please uh, put them in the comments down at the bottom of the video here, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you learned something today. If you did and you liked it, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. And aside from that, as always, have fun, be safe, and hey, take your kids adventure running. Have a great day, everybody.